Hello everybody, welcome to Pro Engineer Made Simple. Uh, this is an introduction lecture so you can get familiar with a few things about Pro Engineer and it'll be very useful for you later on to know that these things so we're starting at the beginning. Uh, when you're opening up Pro Engineer from an icon or from your start menu one thing you need to make sure is to only open it one time. If you try to open it multiple times because you're not getting anything seems like it's not working you're just going to slow the process down and I've seen computers take 15 minutes to open up a pro engineer window and then all of a sudden five more suddenly open up because the person had clicked on the icon too many times click on it once and you can see in your processes uh, an xtop.exe that's pro engineer if you see a lot of those you know, we're gonna, you're going to want to end those processes and begin again. So when you first open up Pro Engineer, you're going to get to come to a window like this. You're going to have a few menus. Uh, this is an uh, internet browser built into Pro Engineer. Uh, I don't use it too often, but it's there if you need it. Over here you have a file directory, and this is a whole bunch of different things later on but primarily it's just to catalog different uh, things that you've done in the part. So first things first we're gonna op start by opening up a new part and primarily we're gonna be using sketch part and assembly when you're learning how to use Pro Engineer and naming files is incredibly important. <laughs> uh, it's a little different than you might think uh, for whatever reason, Pro Engineer does not like spaces in its name of files. It says it's an illegal character. So, but what you can do is replace it with an underscore or a dash or something to get in the way there. So we'll just call this test. And you come up over here and we have this mess in here. What this is, is a coordinate system in the middle and three planes that you'd find in a Cartesian coordinate system. And if you look on the left here, we have those three planes and the center of all of them, where they all intersect. So you have a right, top, and front planes. And in Pro Engineer, they're called datum planes. They're used to reference parts and sketches and all sorts of different things. And it helps Pro Engineer figure out where what you're trying to make actually is in the model. Now obviously we're not going to build our part just from one view. Uh, what we need to do is m manipulate how we look at this. So if you don't have a three button mouse, you're going to want to start off with this pull down menu. It has an A, B on it and a little arrow pointing down. And this will give you several options to view things. Uh, most of the time they're just going to be looking perpendicular at one of the planes. And that can be useful but if sometimes it's not. Now what I'm doing right now is using the middle mouse button and this is what you're really going to want to use for most of the time. If you click the middle mouse button, you push it in and you drag your mouse around, you'll see that this is moving and spinning. And it's spinning around this center coordinate system. If I was trying to move the part I'd hold down shift, click with the middle mouse button, and drag. And that just brought it over to the right. I can bring it back, I can spin it, I can do all sorts of cool things. Well, if you are trying to make a small part or a very, very big part, you're going to need to zoom in or out. And if you scroll using the middle mouse button, you'll zoom in or out. Another way that you can zoom in and out is to just hold control and then drag, click your mouse, middle mouse button and drag up or down. This gives you really fine control on your zoom and I only use it if you're trying to look at some detail. Otherwise, scrolling up and down is just going to be the way to make everything easy. Now we've talked about datum planes here and we have three visible right here. One very useful skill is learning how to make new datum planes and that's using this button right here. 
And what it asks for right here is how much do I want this part, this new datum plane, to be off of the original top datum plane here. And let's just say we want it to be 100 units different. That'll make datum plane 1. Now datum plane 1 here is just a reference datum plane uh, you've created. And sometimes if you create a lot of these, just keep on going, they can get pretty confusing to keep track of. So what you can do, I'm just going to go back here, is name your datum plane. So if you just click on the name twice, you can edit the name. Again, no spaces are allowed. So let's just call it one, for example. Now over here, and in the model, you can see that the name of this datum plane is one. So that's going to be very useful in the first few lectures, and later on we'll talk about more things uh, that you can manipulate here. So always remember to save, very important. Uh, so go ahead and save. Oh, exists anyway. Well, let's continue. And you can print your an image. I wouldn't recommend it unless you finally have your final product or you're trying to show something. Uh, you have open and under all these drop down menus you have most of these same things. Now under the close under file you have a close window option. Now this is if you want to just close out of this part but not out of Pro Engineer because sometimes opening a Pro Engineer on a slow computer can be a pain in the neck. So if you go file close window you go back to the starting uh, setup and you can open up your part again. And there's our part. So just a little example of what you can make in Pro Engineer. Uh, there we go. This is a little something that I threw together a little while ago. Uh, this is going to be a little airplane. And you can see I have a lot of different data planes all over the place. And I use those primarily just to reference everything. And you can see all those data planes over here. So they might be hidden in a subdirectory. And we'll get to those later on. This is just to show you some of the cool things you can do. It's a very simple, basic model, but you can get the idea from this. So, this is the end of Lecture 1, and look forward to Lecture 2.